Now, if you ever wanted to know what that little query ID section is in Elementor and how it works, well, I'm going to show you how today. It turns out it's actually pretty cool and opens up some really useful and powerful features that we're going to take a look at in basic form in this video. So let's set our environment out to ensure that we don't cause any issues when we start adding in our custom code to our website. So this is what we're going to start off with. It's a typical post widget inside Elementor. It's showing you the post grid and currently we're viewing the posts option using the query options inside that particular widget. We can, if we want to, also select pages, landing pages, properties, which is a custom post type. We've also got things like manual selection to pick out specific different results that we want, current query and related. So there's a lot of useful cases inside here. But the problem is if you wanted to combine, for example, the properties and the pages together or the pages and the posts together, we can't do that. We're only able to select a single source. However, we can get around that limitation by using a custom query filter. Now, if you've never seen this inside Elementor Pro, there's a link in the description that'll take you through to this particular article over on the Elementor.com website, all about the custom query filter. And what this allows us to do is tap into the WP query, the integral query feature inside WordPress itself. And we can do it in the way that we can use these different codes. Now, there's different examples inside here, and I'm going to go through a couple of these and show you just the basics. This is not going to be a deep dive into how to use this. It's going to just kind of help you to get started. But we're going to use these examples as, as the statement suggest, some examples. So how do we go about using them? Well, the first thing we're going to want to do is make sure that we don't do anything to destroy or damage our website. And to do that, especially when you're working with code, PHP code, query code, anything like that, is to use a plugin. And for this example, we're going to be using code snippets. Now, I've used code snippets in the past, and I've got dedicated tutorials on how to get started with this. We're just going to go ahead and install this, and then we're going to use this to use it to put our code in, make sure we don't cause any problems on our website. So let's hop over into our site, do a search inside the plugin section for code snippets, and let's install and activate that plugin ready to start working. Now, once that's installed, we have a new entry called snippets, and we're just gonna simply add a new snippet inside here. And we're gonna name this one query demo. So we know exactly what it's about. We can drop in the PHP code, and we can also specify where this is going to run, add a description to it, and also add some tags. Kind of useful when you start to build up quite a lot of different snippets, doing different things like CSS, PHP, and so on. So now we've gone ahead and set our environment up, it's time to start with our first simple example using the query ID feature. Okay, so let's work on our first example, which is gonna be the multiple post types in a post widget, little code snippet. So let's copy this from here, just copy the entire block. We're gonna head back over into our snippets. So we've got a query demo, we're simply gonna paste this inside here. Okay, let's take a quick look at what this is doing. You can see everything is well documented, so it should be pretty self-explanatory. And to be honest, most of it you don't need to really understand. You just need to know what you have to change and what you have to reference. So speaking of reference, the first section, which is add an action, and then we have this string of code. Well, what's this doing? Well, add action is one of the integrated features inside WordPress itself, which allows us to add various different kinds of actions. And this example is telling it we've got the element or query, and we're going to use this custom filter name called my underscore custom underscore filter. So let's just copy that from there, because we're going to need to use that in a moment. So we'll copy that. It's a function, and it's going to reference the query. So the next thing we need to do then is we can see we've got this query set underneath. So this is what actually happens. This is what we tell we want to use inside our custom query. So the first thing is we're referencing post types. So we've got post types such as the posts, pages. We've also got custom post types like properties and so on. Then we have the two different types of posts in this example that we want to use. Now you're not limited to two, you can have as many as you want inside here. So what we need to do is change this custom post type one and custom post type two to actual values that we have inside WordPress. Let's just take this first one out. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in post. Now this isn't plural, you just make sure you put post and page, not posts and pages, otherwise nothing will show up. So let's just select the second one and we're gonna say inside there, we want this to be page. So now we've done is we create this custom query to reference just the posts and the pages and pull all those results in. So let's just save these changes, make sure it's active. If it's not active, just activate it. And we're gonna run this snippet everywhere. So that's that side of things done. Let's hop back over into our actual area now inside our page. And we can see we've got posts currently selected. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop in that query ID that we just copied. 
So let's just paste that inside there. And once we do, you can see that now starts to pull in even more information. Now, all these ones with no featured image in this example are pages. Anything with a featured image is a post. So now we have a combination of posts and pages together. And as you can see, there's a lot more pages using the pagination options. So that's pretty cool to see. Let's just go back into our custom query again. Let's come back in here and we're going to change the page option. And this time we're going to put in properties. Now, if you're ever unsure what you need to actually insert in here, if you're using custom post types, just need to check that out. Now, whether I'm using Jet Engine in this example, but you could be using pods, you could be using custom post type UI, lots of different ways of creating custom posts. Let's just come over to Jet Engine and we're going to open up post types. I'll open that in a new tab. And you can see there's my properties and there's my properties post type slug. So that's exactly what I need. And that's what we're going to use. So once we're back in here, we're going to save these changes. We're going to pop back over into our layout. Just to make sure this is all updated, we're going to remove the filter from there, the query ID, and we're just going to paste it back in just that it is forced it to refresh. And as you can see, everything looks the same. But what we need to do is just go back onto our layout. We'll set this to something like 24. And now we should find, as we scroll through and we go past the lots and lots of posts that I have inside here, we come down to the bottom and you can see there's my custom post type of properties added inside there. Now, we can also still use inside the query, we can also set things up to order them and order by descending and ascending and so on. All those options still work. So let's just say we'll set this to be ascending this time and we'll scroll back up and you can see that puts the properties right at the top of the actual listing. Now, the other thing to bear in mind is the source now no longer works at all. So we come back up here, we change this to something like pages, nothing changes. Because what's happening is this query ID, this custom query is taking precedence over whatever you set inside this source option. Also, if we come into the exclude, for example, we can say we want to exclude a particular post. We'll try that manual post and we'll say we'll set this to be hello. There we go. Hello world. And as you can see, that side of things still does work, but we can't use the source. So you can still use the exclude. The include will have no relevance whatsoever. So this is how you kind of get started. And that's a really basic example. So let's update that to save the changes. Now we've gone ahead and touched upon the basics. Let's take a look at how we can expand our initial query a little to include even more post types. I said you're not limited to just using two different options inside here. You can use as many as you want. The only thing you need to do is make sure you follow the same structure. So you can see at the moment, we've got these little sort of speech marks, then post, then we've got a comma, then we've got another set. We don't have a comma at the end. So what we need to do is if we want to put another one in, we're going to put a comma. We're going to put the symbol that we need inside there. And we're going to say page for this example. We're not going to put a comma at the end of it. So now we've got three different kinds of post types, post, properties and page. Let's save those changes, head back over to our query. Let's just cut this out of there a second. So we'll just take that from there, let it kind of refresh. We'll drop that back in. And now if we take a quick look at our post widget, you can see there's our custom post type of properties. Then we have normal WordPress posts. And if we scroll down, you can see we also have things like contact us and clients, which are normal WordPress pages. So we can easily create more comprehensive filters that allow us to pull in multiple different post types. Now let's take a look at a different type of query this time. Let's take a look at creating a query to display specific post statuses. Now this could be a perfect option when working with front-end dashboard projects where you need to display all posts of a particular status or even all the posts, no matter what their status actually is. So let's try building upon what we've already covered. Let's take a look at this multiple statuses option. Let's copy that from here. Let's hop back over into our snippet and we're going to replace what we have inside there with what we've just copied. So this is now going to go ahead and show us in this example, future and draft. Now you may be thinking, how do I find out how to change these? What exactly are the right uh, sort of information to put in for these post statuses, for example? Well, the WP query documentation has an absolute boatload of useful information, including things like the status parameters. So you can see things like publish, pending, draft, and so on are all listed inside here. So this is pretty much everything you can reference inside the query. Now, there's tons and tons more information inside here, and I would highly recommend you check this out. I'll put a link to this in the description below. So if you do want to get stuck in and really get your head into how to 
get started working with the WP Query and see some of the things you can do with it, this is one of the first places to start. But we don't want to get too heavy in this tutorial. Let's just take a look at what we have. So a snippet says future and draft. That's not what I want. I want to have pending and draft. So if we hop back over to the query documentation, you can see pending is the exact option we want. So let's copy that from there, making sure we have no mistakes. And then we can change this from future and we can just set that to be pending and draft. So now what we're going to do is we've updated our query to only show anything that's pending and draft status. Let's save those changes. And I quickly just pop over to my posts to show you what I've done. I've updated a few things inside the list of demo posts that I've got. I've assigned some different authors and I've also set some to be draft and some to be pending as well as being published. So now we've set up our query, we set everything we want and we have all our posts in place. Let's head back over now into our posts widget and let's just update this by popping in our custom query. And you can see this is now showing just those posts. So we can see there's our pending and there's our draft status posts. Now we can also stack more things on top of this. So for example, let's just say we only want to show them by a specific author. To do that, we're just simply going to use the include by. We'll select author as the option inside there and we'll just start typing in one of the usernames and there we go. So anything by Davy Jones and you can see that's anything by that particular author that's set as pending or draft status. Pretty cool. So now that we've built some simple queries, what about building more comprehensive ones with more than one query included? Well, let's take a look at doing something like that next. Okay, so let's just clear this include by option. So we get all of those draft and pending posts back up. Now, we can, if we want to, add more than one query into our snippet. So for example, you can see our query set is just showing the pending and draft status at this point in time. But how about we also want to control the number of posts per page? This means that our query sits in one location and we're not kind of mixing and matching with various different features inside the query builder as part of this particular widget in Elemental Pro. So we kind of keep everything inside one location Well, we can do things like that. And this is a really simple example, but I want to show you just so you can see what I'm talking about. We're going to set another query inside here. So we're going to come underneath and we're just going to paste in this little bit of code that I've got. And let me just quickly again go through this. You can see we've got exactly the same thing as we have above, which is the query set. So you can see query set. Then we can actually show the function we want to use, which is the post per page, and then the value for that, which is three. Again, a really, really simple example, but just shows you how you can build up your query with multiple different queries, as it were. Let's save our changes on there. Head back over into our widget, and we're going to do the same as usual clear this from here so we can refresh things and then we're going to drop that back inside there and we should find providing this loads in we now have three entries and we've got our pagination showing up showing us the next page and the next page and so on and again if we want to we'll preview those changes let's have a little look just so we can test things out there's our first three results there's our second three results and there's our final results and you can see just one final from the seven that we have. So you can see how you can start to use these to build up more comprehensive, more complex kinds of queries all inside one location without having to get stuck into the functions.php file, doing it safely and securely inside this particular free plugin, which is the Code Snippets plugin. Now the query ID and some basic knowledge opens up an amazing amount of options. And this is just scratching the surface of what you can achieve either using just the WordPress query feature alone or in combination with some of the built-in Elementor Pro tools and features. Now, if you want to learn more about advanced Elementor, check out this video next. As always, all the applicable links for everything I've covered are in the description below. My name is Paul C, this is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.